Do you want to sound more creative, expressive, have a little bit more fun with English? Have you ever heard the expression, as strong as an ox, as deaf as a post, as light as a feather, or even as blind as a bat? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to share with you 30 similes. They are idiomatic expressions that are commonly used in day-to-day -day English. They will help you supercharge your English, sound more natural, more native, and of course, as when it comes to all idiomatic expressions, they are going to help you sound more creative and express yourself more clearly. So, in today's lesson, similes. What are similes? Well, you'll have to keep watching for me to explain. Right, before we get started, as always, please do click that subscribe button to be notified when we upload new lessons. And don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Now, similes. That's right, I was talking about similes. Similes are a type of idiomatic expression. They are a lovely, creative way to, well, essentially describe something or someone. The characteristics, the personality, the features. Now, a simile usually comes in two forms. As plus an adjective plus as plus a noun to compare the thing that you are describing to the thing you are describing. For example, as strong, strong, there's the adjective, as an ox. Okay, an ox is that animal, and clearly it's very strong. However, this sounds a bit exaggerated, and that's exactly the effect you're going for. It's not literal. The person you're describing to be as strong as an ox is not in equal strength to an ox, but you are using this simile to exaggerate what you are trying to express to really emphasize just how strong somebody is. Did you see him lift all those bricks? My goodness, he is as strong as an ox. And likewise, with like, we are saying that something has a similar quality to the thing you are describing, the person you are describing. So to have a memory like a sieve is a perfect example. A sieve is what you drain water through or sieve something through. It's also a verb, but it's essentially saying when you learn something or you were given some information, it quickly drains out of your brain. Okay, it sounds a bit bizarre, but that's essentially what you're saying. For example, oh, what's your address again? Oh dear, I can't remember, it's number 14 something. Sorry, I've got a memory like a sieve. So now you know what a simile is, let's get on with learning some of the most common similes that you can use in day-to-day -day English. Number one, to be as light as a feather. As light as a feather. Clearly a feather, is very light, it's not gonna weigh very much at all. So when you're trying to describe something, the weight of something as being as light as a feather, you are simply saying it doesn't weigh much at all. Oh, don't lift those boxes. Don't worry, they're as light as a feather. Number two, as hard as nails, as hard as nails. If you describe a person as being as hard as nails, you're saying that they are very, well, cold without emotion, without compassion. She never cries when she watches films. <sighs> She's as hard as nails. Number three, to describe somebody as being strong, uh, being able to deal with difficulties in life well, you could describe them as being as tough as old boots, as tough as old. Now I would suggest this idiomatic expression, this simile, is actually less commonly used these days. I think it's a little bit older. Perhaps my grandmother, my mother's generation would use this, but I personally wouldn't. However, you might hear it being used in day-to-day -day English. And of course, you can still use it. It's not without its uses. So, for example, Oh, I never worry about my grandmother's health. She's as tough as old boots, 85 and still going strong. If somebody is perhaps overly confident, if they're not scared of the reaction, they're going to get when perhaps asking for something that could be considered as perhaps inappropriate, rude, or just a little bit greedy even, you could say as bold as brass, as bold as brass. He was as bold as brass. He walked up to the boss and asked for a pay rise. I couldn't believe it. So really it's about being confident, but I would suggest there's slight negative undertones. It does sound like you're a little bit too confident. 
Now this is a simple one, as cold as ice, as cold as ice. Now some people think that the Brits, the British, are as cold as ice. We're not particularly warm and friendly. So you get the idea. It's pretty self-explanatory, somebody that isn't very warm and friendly, that's basically a bit cold. Now number six is possibly one of my most favorite. As dull, boring, as dishwater. Now particularly this one, as dull, as dishwater, you've got a little bit of alliteration, so it sounds quite nice. And essentially dishwater, the water that you wash dirty plates in, is rather dull, it's not interesting, is it? So when someone is boring, or a lesson is boring, it's as dull as dishwater. Hopefully you don't find our lessons as dull as dishwater. Number seven, as good as gold, as good as gold. This is such a common expression that we would use, particularly when we're talking about children, their behavior. I babysat my cousins last night and they were as good as gold. They went to bed on time without a fuss. If someone's a little bit silly, maybe even a little bit forgetful, you could say they're as daft as a brush, as daft as a brush. Now we can also just describe somebody as being a bit daft. It sounds a little bit softer and more polite than saying someone is silly or stupid. So for example, if you offer to help somebody and they say, no, no, I, I don't want to bother you, please, it's, it's okay, I'll manage. You might say, oh, don't be daft or you're being as daft as a brush. Come on, of course I can help you. Number nine, as cool as a cucumber. Cucumbers usually are rather cool. I think most of us keep them in our fridge. And of course, if you say somebody is as cool as a cucumber, you're expressing the fact that they don't get easily flustered or stressed by things. That they, not that they lack emotion, but that they can handle their emotions. For example, she was as cool as a cucumber in the exam. And there were two questions that we didn't even revise for. Number 10, as high as a kite, as high as a kite, a kite that you fly in the air, so clearly it goes very high. Now in this instance, it's for one of two reasons. Either one, someone is taking drugs, so they're high, as high as a kite, or it could be that they are high on emotion, adrenaline. She was so excited about the wedding, she was as high as a kite. So it could be one of those two meanings. Now, someone's very quick to understand. If they are quite intelligent, you could say, they're as sharp as a tack. They're as sharp as a tack. I didn't need to explain things to her. She's as sharp as a tack. She understood everything without my help. Number 12, as regular as clockwork. As regular as clockwork. So when you are trying to express that someone or something is predictable, that you know exactly what they're gonna do and when, then you can say they're as regular as clockwork. She has her breakfast at 8.30 sharp. She's as regular as clockwork. Number 13, one that I used to help explain what a simile is, as strong as an ox. Now this can be talking about physical strength, but it could also be talking about somebody's personality. She's as strong as an ox. All those problems that she had at work, she managed them so well. Number 14, I'm sure you've heard this one before. That's right, as busy as a bee. Bees do look like they're rather busy gathering nectar, pollen, to make honey. And this is a great expression, one that we, I, often use. Gosh, I'm sorry I didn't call you back. I've been as busy as a bee. I'll try and call you later. Likewise, as quiet as a mouse. Mice are generally quite quiet, so it's a perfect comparison. She's as quiet as a mouse, you never hear her at work. She doesn't come and talk to anyone. Right, I'll be as quick as a flash, meaning I'll be very quick. I'm just going to the shops, I'll be as quick as a flash, I, I won't be long at all. Oh my goodness, with this weather, my hands are as dry as a bone. As dry as a bone. Very, very dry. Number 18, oh, I've had a shower, washed my hair, I am as clean as a whistle. Honestly, all that gardening is rather dirty work. So to be very, very clean, as clean as a whistle. Number 19, as wise as an owl. You can see how very often we take the qualities that we usually associate with certain animals and use them in similes. Owls are considered to be very wise. Now, why? I don't know. Something about the way they hold themselves, like they're thinking, I guess. But you could say that someone is as wise as an owl or wise as an owl. My grandmother, she's as wise as an owl. I always go to her for advice. 
Number 20, as proud as a peacock. Now, peacocks do come across as being quite proud animals when they display their feathers. So if you describe someone as being as proud as a peacock, you're describing them as being very, very proud. As he watched his daughter graduate and get her degree, you could see he was as proud as a peacock. Now, 21 to 25, be very careful. These expressions could be a little bit insulting, so use them wisely. Number 21, as death as a post. As death as a post. You weren't even listening to me, were you? You completely messed up the recipe. You're as deaf as a post. Did you see her driving? She's as blind as a bat. She shouldn't be on the roads. So to not be able to see something or anything very well. As deaf as a post, you're not listening, you don't listen. Or as blind as a bat, you don't see things. You don't really pay attention. Number 23, as thin as a rake. This is a rake. And of course, if you say to somebody, oh, you're as thin as a rake, it does sound rather insulting, like you're saying they're too thin. That's essentially what you are saying. So don't use that one to somebody's face. You might say, oh, uh, Sarah's been really stressed lately. She's as thin as a rake now. I'm a bit worried. Just be careful how and when you use it. 24, and I'm sure we've taught you this one before, but as mad as a hatter, as mad as a hatter. Now this I thought came from the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland, but in fact, it's describing uh, a hatter, someone that used to make hats back in London, back in the day, and for some reason they were mad. I can't remember the reason why, I think I did it in another lesson. But anyway, as mad as a hatter, someone is really crazy and not quite, the full shilling. That's a nice retro expression for you to mean basically uh, they're crazy. So not the full shilling, your extra retro expression, or as mad as a hatter. The simile. As drunk as a lord. Now when it comes to drinking and being drunk, for some reason in the UK we have quite a lot of expressions. So we would say as drunk as a lord or as drunk as a skunk. And I think that really is more to do with the rhyming. You don't actually expect a skunk to be drunk. Um, or he drank like a fish. So you can see we've got a lot of expressions for being drunk. But essentially, as drunk as a lord, someone is very, very drunk, intoxicated. They've been drinking too much. Now, these next similes are ones that are using like. Okay, so to compare the qualities of something or someone to express yourself better and to describe the personal thing you want to describe, <laughs> if that makes sense. He ate like a horse. He ate like a horse, meaning he ate a lot. He had a very big appetite. We often use the expressions as well, oh, I could eat a horse, meaning I'm really, really hungry. So if you eat like a horse, you have a very big appetite. If you could eat a horse, not a simile, but an idiomatic expression, then you're really hungry, you could eat that much. Now I will say in the UK, we don't eat horses at all. We don't have horse meat. It's actually a bit of a scary thing for us Brits to think about. But I know that in some countries, horse meat is quite a delicacy. My husband does like to eat horse meat when we go to Sicily. And unfortunately, when we drive through the New Forest uh, in my hometown, he looks at the horses and goes, hmm, burger. <laughs> so I digress, I'm going off on a tangent here, but just a bit of fun. Number 27, I've already used this one in my previous example, but essentially to drink like a fish means that they are drinking a lot of alcohol. Wow, Sabra was knocking back the Prosecco, so that girl can drink like a fish. I'm kidding, of course. 28, to have a memory like a sieve. I already explained this as I was explaining what a simile is, but to have a memory like a sieve, the object lets water drain through, and equally so, you're saying that your memory doesn't hold on to information very well. So you learn something and it's like a sieve, it just drains away. I'm sorry, I forgot your address. I've got a memory like a sieve. Number 29, oh my goodness, I slept like a log last night. Now a log, uh, basically a tree that's been cut down, that's been felled, basically you're saying you slept without moving, you were just in a very deep, heavy sleep. You slept really, really well. So if someone asks you, how did you sleep last night? Did you sleep well? You could say, oh yeah, I slept like a log. That bed was so comfortable. Number 30, 
I've actually got 31 expressions here. I'm going to use them all. Number 30, to have eyes like a hawk. Now, a hawk, a bird of prey, has excellent vision to be able to catch their prey, to hunt. So, for example, the teacher spotted her cheating in the exam. She's got eyes like a hawk. She doesn't miss a thing. And finally, if something goes really, really well, if a plan goes well, or if something starts working when you were trying to fix it, you could say, it works like a dream. Oh, I took the car to the mechanic and now it is working like a dream. It's perfect. The engine, no more problems. It could also be when referring to a plan. We needed to get her out of the house in order to organize the surprise party. So my friend decided to take her shopping. Worked like a dream, she was gone all afternoon. There we have it. 31, in fact, I said 30 at the beginning, 31 similes, idiomatic expressions, to show that something is similar to something else. You use the qualities of an animal, an object, to describe the person or thing you want to. Now, one thing I would suggest when it comes to being a little bit more natural and native and an advanced speaker in English, is that sometimes you can make up your own similes, all right? Now, these ones are obviously fixed expressions. We use them regularly in English, but there's nothing to stop you trying to make a simile of your own. So do comment below, either be creative, make your own simile, or indeed share one that you have learnt before. Comment below and let me know. And of course, do give an example, a nice context to help someone read in the comments understand your simile. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll be able to use one or more of those similes to help you in your day-to-day -day English, to help you sound more natural, native and confident when it comes to speaking English. Take care. Bye.